Hello, this is the Mushroom Wizard, and once again I'm bringing to you a presentation about the mushrooms of Saskatchewan and how we pick those mushrooms. So, today we're going to be looking at the jelly fungi of Saskatchewan, and this includes some truly unique and bizarre species. The genre that we're going to be looking at are Auricularia, Calocera, Dacrymyces, Exidia, Whipinia, Pseudohydnum, and Tremella. So what are jelly fungi? Jelly fungi are fungi with a rubbery or gelatinous fruiting body. Uh, sometimes it can be close to the equipment, close to slime even. Uh, other times it'll be more like a gummy bear or a gummy worm if you're fan of candy like I am. These tend to be bland in taste. They are fairly easy to identify and some of them are very brightly colored and for that reason I would consider them to be good for getting uh, younger kids into the hobby. Because they're fun to pick. So the first mushroom that we're going to look at is the wood ear. Now for those of you that have already delved to some extent into mushroom picking, uh, you're probably familiar with Auricularia auricula judae, which is the wood ear in most guidebooks, but that is a European species. The species here is Auricularia americana, and there is a key difference that I'll go over when we talk about the ecology of this mushroom. So the fruiting body is uh, kind of a dark reddish brown to tan color. Uh, sometimes it's a bit more towards the violet end. Um, these are fan or ear shaped. They form this uh, vertical ribbed lobe or like almost like a cup that's been turned sideways. Uh, they have, there's a bit of a good bit of variability in, in its shape. They are malleable and they are rubbery, kind of like the consistency of a gummy bear or a gummy candy. They do harden with age, so when they're past maturity. Uh, these attach to wood at a single lateral point and they are up to about two inches across. They turn black with age and they produce white spores on the interior of that cup there. Here you can see some examples of that variability in terms of its overall shape. On the right hand side you can also see those spores forming on one of those ridges. You see that white powder there. Here we have some size references for you. Their ecology is saprobic and they grow upon decaying conifers. So this is the major difference between this species and the European wood ear that would be in your guidebook. Uh, the European species grows on decaying elm trees, whereas these ones grow on conifers. These appear in the spring, summer, and fall after periods of heavy rainfall. And they are also very much preferential to dark, kind of damp areas. Places that would be shaded throughout the day. They are to some extent uncommon in Saskatchewan. So if you've never seen this, don't, don't worry. A lot of people haven't. They are gregarious when they do grow often with many fruiting bodies kind of jostling for space and clumping together. I would consider their edibility to be relatively poor. They're tasteless, they're kind of rubbery. Uh, they are good for dehydrating. You can dry them out and then reconstitute them later. These are traditionally used in Chinese medicine and that's kind of where they have come from in terms of being included in certain dishes. 
and they're for intermediate mushroom pickers. I'm not going to say yay or nay in terms of Chinese medicine, but if you're looking for medicinal mushrooms, there are much better ones with more scientific backing behind them that we will cover eventually in their own presentation. So we have a look-alike that we're going to address. This is the wood ear on the left, Auricularia americana, and on the right we have one of the several Ziza species, all of which look pretty much the same. Uh, it's hard to, to tell one Ziza species apart from another, and we have several in Saskatchewan. And some of them are mildly toxic. They are also very common. Next species, this is the orange jelly, or the orange brain, or the orange witch's butter, or one of any number of common names that is applied to this mushroom. This is Dacrymyces palmatis. Very common in Saskatchewan. So the fruiting body is yellow to orange in coloration. It's very bright, as you can see there. Uh, these are lobed or brain-like masses. They're gelatinous. They are wet to the touch and almost like malleable slime in moist conditions. But in drier conditions, they are more tacky and, and fairly firm. The individual lobes, so each, each one of those little tiny lobes can be up to about a half inch. However, the whole mass is, is, can be really any size, right? It can cover the side of a tree. I mean, it's really hard to put size to something that is made up of smaller parts. So this does produce a pale yellow spore print. And here you'll see a size reference. But once again, it's really hard to uh, to give a reference to something that can be much larger than this or often just small little parts scattered about on a, on a tree trunk. The ecology is saprobic, and these grow on decomposing conifers. So that is um, a great way to determine the difference between this one and the next mushroom. But we'll cover that in a second. These are often found on bark or between that space between the bark and the wood. So I find uh, when I when I come across a bit of these showing, if I pull the bark away just a bit, you can also often find a much larger mass of this hidden away. These occur spring through to fall, but I tend to find them most often in the spring after a good heavy rain. And these lobes will cluster together, forming one large mass. Their edibility is poor. It's basically tasteless slime. You can put it into soup to make it wonderful and colorful, but this is a, a mushroom that is fun for kids because you can see it from you know quite a distance. It's it's basically like a blinking light. So good for kids to get into the idea of foraging. And there are no toxic lookalikes. So this is good for beginner mushroom pickers. Now we're going to be looking at witch's butter. Again, there's any number of common names that can be applied to these so on the left-hand side, we have the classic witch's butter, which is Tremella mesenterica. And on the right-hand side, we have the brown witch's butter, which is Phytotremella frondosa. So the fruiting body is yellow to light orange in Tremella mesenterica, which you're seeing there on the right, and then tan to brown in uh, the brown witch's brother. These are lobed or brain-like. They are gelatinous, wet to the touch in moist conditions, very much like the last mushroom we saw. 
and then they are tacky and firm when dry. The individual lobes once again are up to about a half inch and again they produce a pale yellow spore print. And there we have the brown which is better for your consideration. Looks very much the same but it is brown. Here's the size reference for you. Once again, I would point out that something made up of smaller components can be uh, fairly variable in size. As you can see there, that's a, quite a bit larger than the, the previous one. The ecology is unique uh, in terms of in terms of jelly mushrooms. These are parasitic towards the hyphae of sterium fungi. And sterium fungi are kind of like this uh, flat sort of crusty fungi that appears on the trunks of decaying conifers and hardwoods. These only grow on hardwoods. So they are found spring through to fall. They're usually found in dense clusters of lobes, as you can see. Now, if you look at the photo, you can see the sterium fungi. It's that kind of greenish thing there. And uh, yeah, so this is basically parasitizing that fungi. Once again, the edibility for both of these mushrooms is poor. They are, once more, tasteless slime. You can put them into soup to make it colorful and weird. Kids like that. They're fun for kids, easy to see. They have this bizarre exotic appeal to them. They're good for beginner mushroom pickers because you're not going to mistake this for anything else. I would hope. Now this is the black brain, Exidia glandulosa. black in coloration, as you can see, lobed or brain-like, very similar in terms of its texture and how it grows to the last two mushrooms. This is gelatinous. It's again wet to the touch in moist conditions, dry and tacky when in drier conditions. The individual lobes are the same. They're about a half inch each. This has a white spore print as opposed to the pale yellow. You can see a size reference of a drier specimen there. The ecology is saprobic on decaying oak and rarely on conifers as well. So if you're going to look for this mushroom, your best chance of success will be either in a, an urban area where there are oak trees or in the southeastern portion of the province where oak occurs naturally. So these are found early spring and in the fall, later fall, they like cool weather that's wet and they're usually found in dense clusters of many lobes. Poor edibility. That's what we can come to expect from most of these. Uh, they again are tasteless slime. Makes the soup weird for kids. Fun to find. Next species. This is one of my favorite mushrooms of all time. It is absolutely gorgeous and it actually tastes good. So this is the apricot jelly Wapinia helveloids. The fruiting body of this mushroom is pink or salmon in coloration. It's kind of got this vase or tongue shaped funnel uh, or else it'll be several eccentric lobes just kind of lumped together. Uh, there's a lot of variability in terms of its shape. So the outer surface is, is wrinkled and fertile and then the interior is smooth. The margin curls outwards when it's in that vase shape as you can see. Uh, these have a rubbery texture kind of like a gummy bear so at least it's not a lump of slime and uh, they're up to about four inches tall and five inches wide so a good sized mushroom and they have a white spore print 
there's some size references for you. There's a smaller one on the left and a good size one on the right. It would be good size for the table there. The ecology is saprobic. They grow on heavily decayed coniferous wood that's usually been buried an inch or two beneath the soil. Uh, they are found midsummer through to fall and they're solitary, scattered, or in, or in small groups. And you can see on the right hand side there uh, a very eccentric uh, specimen. It's still quite beautiful, but that is in no way a vase shape. They are good. These ones actually taste good. They have a mild taste. You can eat these ones raw and they are uh, traditionally eaten in salads or as a garnish in that way. Sometimes as well they are preserved in sugar or candied, caramelized, something of the sort. These are great for beginner mushroom pickers. I just thought I'd throw another photo in there because they're so gorgeous with that color. Next species. This is the orange staghorn, Calisura vicosa. It looks an awful lot like the coral mushrooms, which there will be a presentation on later, but this is not a coral mushroom. When you touch it, it's actually going to be very jelly-like, and it's going to again have that consistency more along the lines of a gummy bear. So the fruiting body is bright yellow to orange to red. Sometimes there are white specimens. There are numerous forked branches extending from a central basal mass. So all those branches just connect right at the bottom. And again, this is reminiscent of coral fungi. The tips are rounded. This is going to have a greasy texture if you're running your finger over it. And again, it'll be very malleable. Uh, they produce white spores. And they'll grow up to about four inches high and three inches wide, but that would be a very large specimen. These are usually quite small. Here you can see that one centimeter on the left, just how small that is. Luckily, they often occur on mass. They're saprobic. They're found at the base of rotting conifers or along the root lines. And if they're going on the root lines, it'll appear like they're uh, growing out of the soil or the duff, but they are actually attached to wood. Uh, they're not terrestrial. These are, as I said, gregarious. You'll often find large groupings of them, and they are found from the summer through to fall. Edibility is poor. They're insubstantial. Uh, they make a good garnish if you want to brighten up a mushroom mix or any dish. They're good for beginner mushroom pickers because you're not going to confuse this for anything else. Next mushroom. The tooth jelly Pseudohydnum gelatinosum. And this one is truly weird. The fruiting body is translucent white to gray. Uh, it is rubbery, so like a gummy bear or a gummy worm. It's tongue or fan shaped, though I don't know really, that shape is just so bizarre. It's hard to make an appropriate comparison, a picture is better. Uh, it's smoother velvety on the outer portion of the body, but on the spore bearing portion, there's, there's these teeth reminiscent of a hedgehog mushroom and they line the underside there. And it's up to about three inches wide and 2.5 inches high. And these produce white spores. There's some size references for you. These mushrooms are saprobic on the trunks of decaying conifers. They're fairly rare in Saskatchewan. They are found in the fall. 
They are solitary to gregarious. They sometimes clump together. You can see in this photo they appear to be quite gregarious. Their edibility is good. So this is a mushroom that if you find is worth picking for sure. They have a mild taste. Once again, these are often candied or they'll be added to salads or marinated in some manner. I have uh, seen photos as well where people will uh, preserve them in olive oil that's been marinated. These are good for beginner mushroom pickers because again what could you possibly confuse that for? And that is everything for the jelly mushrooms of Saskatchewan. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. This is the Mushroom Wizard and I will see you again next time I do one of these presentations, hopefully.